One of the things I enjoy most about being a priest is working with young couples who are preparing for marriage. In fact, I had a number of couples this, this past week that I worked with, and it's always so wonderful to see young love. And I'm amazed because as I've been doing this these past 10 or 11 years as a priest, the couples are getting younger and younger and younger and younger. I don't know how that's possible. And it's so hopeful to see love in their eyes. And of course, they're coming to the church and want to be married, which is wonderful. They want to receive the sacrament. It's a blessing to be in their presence. Of course, some of the couples uh, sometimes are a little more memorable. And I remember one experience I had probably seven or eight years ago. And the couple came to me for marriage preparation. They sat in the office. And they both had binders. They were holding these binders and looking at them as I was speaking to them. And after a while, they interrupted me and they said, Father, you don't have to tell us anything else. We got it all figured out. Married life, we have a five-year plan. We know that in the first uh, five years, we're going to have 2.5 children, a boy and a girl. We're going to have a cat and a dog. We're going to have a split-level house in this neighborhood. We're going to have a white picket fence. We're going to have a place up north, preferably on a lake. And they went on. And they meant it. So I listened for a while. And afterwards, I thought to myself, well, we'll see how that works out for you. Of course, they were young, they were in love, they had plans, and there's nothing wrong with plans. But you know, and I know, that oftentimes in life, the dreams and the hopes that you and I have, some of them come true. Other ones are still a work in progress, and still others are not to be. Yes, indeed, God does often, very often, change our plans. And the challenge for us is to be open to it when they change. Today in our Gospel, we hear about someone whose plan was changed. We hear about St. Joseph. And Joseph was married to the love of his life, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Recall, if you will, that for the Jewish people at that time, there were three parts to what we know today as marriage. First, there was the betrothal, and then somewhat later on, a ceremony, and then sometime after that, the couple lived together. So there were three parts. Mary and Joseph were married, they were just in that first part. And Joseph has plans, he's happy, he probably was an older man. Mary was a young Jew Jewish woman, and they were in love. And suddenly he receives word that she is with child. And Joseph knows that this is not the way things normally go. And he's probably confused and probably very, very hurt. So he has to change his plans. And he decides, well, I'm going to leave her quietly because he knows that if he had exposed Mary to the Jewish law at that time, the penalty for an adulteress would be that the woman was thrown into a pit and the men of the town would grab large stones and throw them at her until she bled to death. They couldn't touch her because she was a sinner. That was the penalty for adultery. We live in very different times today. So Joseph knew this. And he loved her so much, and he was such a gentleman, that he decided to leave her quietly and cry his tears of regret for the rest of his life. Why did this have to happen? But then, God comes to him in a dream and says, it's okay. You don't understand it completely, Joseph, but it will be all right. Take Mary into your home. Take her completely as your wife. 
The child that she will bear is the Son of God. Take her into your home. And Joseph awoke, and he changed his plan again. And he took Mary into his home. Because Joseph was willing to be open to what God had in mind, even though when he didn't completely understand it, even when it was not according to his itinerary, or his dreams, or his hopes. Because Joseph was open, we have our Savior, Jesus. Christmas is about Joseph and Mary and many other people being willing to change their plans, being open to God, changing their plans, being open to God's plan. So you and I know as we go through life that uh, oftentimes we have to switch directions. The hopes and dreams that we had, some of them come true. Others we're still working on. Others are not to be. And I think that the sign of becoming an adult or maturity is a realization that not all of our hopes and dreams will come true, but if we are willing to change our plan and be open to what God has for us at the moment, that something even better will happen, and it will be for the best. But of course, sometimes this is very hard to do. You know, and I know. You know, uh, it's a change of plan when we find out that a loved one of ours has passed away and we were hoping to have more time with them and would we really rather have them around and they died too soon and we're not happy about it and God why did you do this to me sometimes we have to allow God to change our plans Sometimes we're working a job and we like the job very much, but we find that we get a pink slip and the job has come to an end. Time to change our plan. Sometimes we have to move away from family and friends and those we love and we have to start again somewhere else in a new house, in a new community, and we'd really rather not do it. But it's time to move and we have to change our plans. And sometimes we find that we have a serious health diagnosis and that the things that we would like to do, we can't do anymore. We have to readjust things in our mind and to say, okay, what's the next step forward? These are just a few examples. But I think the challenge for us is to realize that the good Lord is so often present in the most powerful moments when we have to change direction. We have to do a reboot. We have to rethink things. We have to let something go and try something new. This can often be very painful. But at that moment, which is so intimate, and we are so vulnerable, it's at that moment when the good Lord wants to give us his grace to help us to try something new, go a new direction. And it's at a moment like that where you and I have to make a choice, just like Joseph had to make a choice. Are we going to get mad and throw a fit and pout and be like a two-year-old and curl up in a ball and turn into a prune and be angry and mad and upset with the world? Some of us have done that some of us here. When our plans change and we don't like it, we have to make a choice. Are we going to be upset? Are we going to be bitter? Or are we going to say, all right, Lord, I don't completely understand this. I don't completely like it. But okay, your will be done. Help me to do it joyfully. That's what Joseph did. That's what Mary did. That's what you and I are being called to do in the little things and in the big things. And the big things are hard. But the idea is that oftentimes, most of the time, 
all of the time. When we have to make a change in plan, it's often that God is there. He's right next to us. He's carrying us along the way. We need to let him in. And when we do, things will be okay. And they will be for the best. And things will work out. We are just a few days from Christmas. You know and I know. It's upon us. And we're going to have a white Christmas, thanks be to God. But I'd like to invite us all to ponder these, these final few days. The fact that the Christmas story is really all about Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and all of the characters of the story, the Magi, all of them had to change their plans. Read the Gospels. You'll see. They were going one way, then they had to decide to go another way. They were open to God redirecting them. And you know what happened. We have the Lord. We have our Savior. I invite each one of us, all of us, to, as we ponder these things, as we get ready to celebrate a new year, to be open to the new direction that the Lord is going to send us, to be open to God changing our plans, to trust him, to know that when those changes in plan come, that Jesus is born in us. He really is. And when he is, when we're open, we will have Christmas. May God bless you.